So obviously from the title, from the thumbnail and the intro, you know that we're gonna do a mural kind of on this wall. I'm not even close to being there yet. I put the end clips of the video to tease at the beginning as the intro, but there's a lot of things I have to do before we kind of get there. Some studio maintenance. I leave a bunch of stuff, I store stuff, miscellaneous mural supplies. So the main room I use is this room and it's dialed. It has, you know, the feng shui, and I'm in here 85, 90% of the time. But you know, this is an equally as big space, and I've been wanting to kind of change it around into some really cool things. You know, that's far down the road, but I kind of have phases of my plan. You know, I want this to be kind of a photo studio. All of this, kind of crap is gonna go. I like to move things around and build stuff, and so this is the first stage. Get all this crap out, let's begin. So I wasn't even planning on doing this little corner, you know, I was just moving out that stuff and I was thinking for the whole studio, like what do I actually use? Never use this table that was right here. Just purging, it feels great. Now this is a nice little canvas storage space, you know, because canvases are everywhere. I moved this big painting up there, it looks great. Who knows what that corner will be right now, good canvas storage. Moving to this place. I'm gonna tackle this next, all right? We're gonna do some more maintenance. I gotta get this done. I built this table in high school. It's an absolute beast. This is actually like extinct chestnut. This wood, it's such a beast. It's still crushing. Hold on. I think this will fit perfectly. Wow. gonna roll over this graffiti. This was like one of the first things I put up in the studio a while ago, two and a half years ago. I really love this graffiti piece. Just simple white, a cool little like pink outline. And it looks nice, it's slew, you know? It's good to cover over things, impermanence is a good practice. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna clean it up uh, and just keep going. This is a more recent sketchbook. This is a sketch from the beginning that I really liked and from a while ago when I was living in Brooklyn, I wanted to develop it into a mural and I actually developed it into a digital illustration. I liked it so much. Put it into the iPad, you know, flushed out some colors, did some shading. And when you do that, it kind of brings it more to life, I guess you can say. And you know, full-blown digital illustration is great. And that made me want to make a mural even more. But I never got the chance when I was living in Brooklyn. So now we're gonna throw it up. Ancient mural Kipto. gods, please give me strength. Kipto. Listen to my prayers. Kipto. How many mural gods? Kipto. Listen. Guys, I'm feeling crazy right now. Look at this train and look at this rainstorm. I don't know if it's that or it's maybe this Kipto shirt. But when I was covering this graffiti, I was like, darn, I really wish I could have kept that somehow. And then I was thinking about the next mural, I would have to do that eventually if I moved out of this place or just fell on to cover it. So I took this drop cloth, which is massive. It's like eight by 12 feet. And I'm just gonna paint it with this prime and paint in one, do that and then lay it up on the wall and then just paint on that. And then I'll be able to keep it. It's like a big portable mural or like a, like a big tapestry, you know? So huge audible. Um, this video is going places I did not expect but uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Let's keep going. So I kind of knew this was gonna happen because this is thin canvas. It's, it's a drop cloth. It's not the canvas you wrap canvases with like cotton duck or linen. This is, but it's just a low thread count and it's thin, obviously. It dripped through, probably could have been pretty avoidable, but um, I'm just gonna put it up on the wall 
these floors don't really matter that much, so it's fine to get paint in it everywhere, but <laughs> yeah, not my finest hour. This is probably gonna be pretty hard by myself, but I think I can do it. I laid in tacks already at this end, so I'll kind of just have to like nail it up as I go. Where's my hammer? Where's my hammer? So I'm gonna need a ladder, obviously. It's holding. It's holding. Yeah, and this stuff is already dried, so oops. Whoa! That sucks! So this video has gone so off the rails. I usually plan everything, the artwork, the filming, and execute those within my head so that the editing process is easier. It's kind of like a synchronized dance, but this has gone totally not what I planned, but it's great. It's even better than I expected, but I'm gonna have to do two two-part video because of this. But um, the, the next kind of order of operations, this is the illustration on this piece of 11 by eight um, printer paper. The grid I have is 10 by 7.5 multiplied by 10. So this grid is 10 times bigger and that's how I got the size of the tapestry. So that will be the grid I make on that. And then I'll just follow the grid. It's two lines right here, two lines right there. And it's super easy, you know, like, that's just how grids work. This isn't a super hard character, so I don't really need a grid, but I thought I'd do it just to smack her right in the middle of that um, tapestry. And uh, let's move forward. I've been into these China markers recently. That's what I'm using. It's like a high quality crayon China marker. So off camera, I kind of moved some shapes around, shrunk the head a little, moved the eyes. It's a very simple illustration. And so moving the features like the nose, eyes, mouth are very easy. It's not difficult. But what I did is I took a paint marker and solidified those lines where I want them to be. And I've said this before, and it's very important actually this stage to have a good foundation. If you build a building, you're not going to build it without a solid, sturdy, correct foundation. And so the outline, getting all the shapes solidified is very important to the success of murals. I think it's how I work. Um, and having that roadmap, that rubric is important to me. And so the next kind of stage is to paint the background. I didn't want to waste paint. So I'm going to fill in the negative space with a nice kind of muted yellow. <laughs> too crazy kind of just filling in the negative space with some yellow to kill the background and we got the character just kind of floating in the middle ready to be painted so now moving on towards actually trying to fill in the character I got a bunch of supplies here I got latex paint I got different spray paints I have different acrylic paints and you can use really whatever you want especially on a kind of surface like this I could do only latex paint I could do only spray paint I could also do only acrylic but since I kind of have everything and you know some things are used for different things I'm gonna use probably them all now this is gonna be the end of part one it's gonna be too long of a video, so I'm making a part two, which is pretty much the whole painting stage. So you gotta stay tuned for that if you wanna see how this girl ends up. Give you a little sneak peek here. Bunch of great information. Gonna make it super gorgeous. I'm really excited about that. So I'll see you in part two. <laughs>